All right, so this is going to be review two. This is intermediate sketching. You can see from this finished project, it's going to be pretty intricate. We've got a lot of curves and just a lot of measurements going on in here. And we're going to learn a couple new tools, I believe. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. First step, create a new document. Be sure that the workspace length unit is set to millimeters and then begin a sketch on the front plane. So we're going to go ahead and go to Create Document. It's going to be Review 2, so include your name in it if you can. So Vigil Review 2. So it said on the front plane so we're going to select the front plane. So again, you can do this two ways. You can select the plane first, then start a sketch, or you can select the sketch option and then select your plane. And then you can start drawing. So from here, I like to be viewing this straight on. So the easiest way for you, for you to do that, you can either click here on the, the navigation cube or right click and choose view normal to sketch plane. And then we still see the outline of the planes, which are just references in 3D. So you can hide those by clicking the P button to just toggle the planes off. Now we're ready to draw. So the next step. So we're going to sketch a vertical construction line with the bottom endpoint coincident to the origin as shown. So that is, this origin is used a lot to anchor your drawing in place. Otherwise, you could, um, when you're done with your sketch, you could still move it around in space. So our first line is going to be coincident with that point. So we're going to click the line tool, make sure we're set to construction mode. And if you hover over that, you can see that there's a shortcut, which is Q. So Q for construction. That's how I, I've remembered it. Q for construction. So I can toggle between construction and not by using the Q key. So I want to make sure it's construction. We're going to click here at the point of origin and then make sure it's vertical. And then about yay high. Again, in this shape on shape um, software, it's a sketch is really a sketch. There's no specific measurements put in. You do that later. So we're just getting the general shape. So we have a vertical construction line, and then we want some horizontal. And starting at the origin and then a vertical line as shown. So we have a horizontal and a vertical. So we're going to go back to the line tool. Start at the point of origin and drag over about to there and then up say about right there. Escape. Next slide. Now we're going to draw an arc. So the three-point arc is a very specific type of arc. We're going to place the first, place the two endpoints first, then the third click will place the arc. Be sure the bottom endpoint of the arc is coincident, so attached to the top endpoint of the blue vertical line. So these two need to be attached and um, coincident. So we're going to go ahead and start with a two-point arc. So this one is set to three-point arc. Actually, it said three-point arc, didn't it? Yes. So we want the three-point arc. And we're going to start here, make sure that it's coincident. Then we're going to drag away, and it's not perfectly vertical. So I'm just going to click over here somewhere. And it goes inward this way. I'm just going to click the third time to create a little arc. All 
All right, next slide. We're going to use the mirror tool to mirror the vertical line and the arc on the opposite side of the construction line. So I'm going to go ahead and get out. I'm still in the arc tool, so I'm going to press escape to get out of that. And now I'm going to go to the mirror tool, which is found right here. And then it says select mirror line, which is this line here. Select entities to be mirrored. I want to mirror this line and I want to mirror this line. And I think I want the other line too. Did I skip a step? Nope. Well, let's see. All right, so I want to mirror this line too, I believe. There we go. So we're done mirroring, so I'm going to press escape to get out of that tool. Step four, use the mirror entities command to mirror the two lines. We already got that. All right, number five, add a tangent arc between the other two arcs by selecting the tangent arc tool from the sketch bar. Then click on the end point of one of the arcs. Next, click on the end point of the other arc as shown. Be sure the new arc is tangent to both existing arcs before moving to the next step. All right, so we're going to start with a tangent arc tool. So we're going to choose this one here. Click one of these points to start the arc. I'm going to click over to the other point to end the arc. I'm going to click on Show Constraints so I can see and make sure this arc is tangent so let's go ahead and escape out of the arc tool, hover over this. This tangent constraint only applies to this line over here. So I want to make sure that this is also tangent to this arc over here. So I need to add a tangent from this arc to this arc. So now I'm tangent on both ends. Now we need a coincident constraint between the center point of the arc and end point of the construction line. So coincident just means that it's snapped to that and they will forever be connected until you release it. So a coincident constraint between the center point of the arc and the end point of the construction line. So the center point of the arc is right in there. I'm just going to zoom in temporarily to show you that. Whoops. All right, so we need to make a coincident between this point and this point. So that places the center of the arc exactly at that endpoint. Now we're going to add dimensions as shown. So the first one I'm going to do is this 200 between the center of the arc and the base point of origin there. So that's 200. So we're going to move to this dimension tool. So between here and here, should be 200. Then we have this measurement here, which is 50, and then 125. So between here and here, 50.
and then here and here should be 125. Then we have a, a radius of 125 and a radius of 75. So this should be 125. And then this one should be 75. All right, everything should at this point be black, which means it's locked down in place. Next step. We want to offset an arc inward by 40 units. So offset is right here. We want to offset this line inside and then we're going to set the measurement was it 40 I think that's correct yes So that first, I'm going to go back and redo that step because this, this is a new tool. So let's go back. So we're going to offset this line. And the first thing you're going to be asked is which direction you want to offset. Do you want to be inside or outside? It happens to be choosing the right direction. But if it happens to be outside and you need to switch that, you have to click on this arrow icon. It's just a directional icon. So you can go either inside or outside. You want to be inside. So you click anywhere inside to accept that. And then you place your measurement. So 40. All right, next. Sketch a vertical line as shown. So we have a line just kind of floating out here in the middle of nowhere. So we need to sketch this line about right here. Next step, we're going to add an arc. So sketch a tangent arc connecting the offset arc to the vertical line as shown. And make sure it's tangent on both sides. So we're going to go ahead and grab our tangent arc, which it's already set that. That's the last one that we used. So it's set there as the default for the arc tool. So the first one is automatically going to be tangent to that line. Then we're going to click here. So we have one tangent constraint already. But this one is not. So we need to add that tangent constraint. So I'm going to click here, make this arc and this arc tangent. So it's tangent on both ends. Next slide. Select the sketch mirror tool to mirror the line and the tangent arc about the construction line as shown. Be sure that newly mirrored entities have the indicated sketch constraints. So we want coincident and tangent on both of those. So we're going to mirror those over. So select the mirror line. Well, that's the offset, sorry. So this one here, mirror. Select the mirror line first, and then the entities you want to mirror. So we want to mirror this line and this arc over. So we have already something broken here. So I'm going to make that tangent and see if that fixes it. So I want this line and this line to be tangent. Can't be. 
right, so there's something wrong here. I need to check this out. Let me go ahead and I have all the, sh the constraints shown. Let's see if there's a slide with the constraints. Nope. Something off about my drawing. Well, let's try that again. So let's mirror this over to this line first this time. See if I can make that tangent. Well, I'm going to try to make them coincident and tangent. So if you experience the same thing I did, that's how we're going to fix it. So those two lines need to be attached and coincident. So coincident and tangent. We're going to mirror over the other line here. So we have this here. And we'll go ahead and make this tangent to that as well. All right, we're hoping this is going to work out. First time I did this, this did not happen. So let's go ahead and move back to the instructions. All right, now we've got the another arc at the bottom tangent arc connecting the two vertical lines at the bottom make sure it's tangent on both ends so we have a tangent relationship with this line so we need to add one with the other line which be tangent on both ends Now we're going to add a rectangle and we're going to use the center point rectangle which draws from the center out. We're going to use the center construction line as our reference point. Again, we're kind of just eyeballing it without specific dimensions. So from the center point, coincident to this line, whoops. So I'll make sure I'm choosing the right kind of rectangle. Center point rectangle. I'm going about yay big. Go back to the instructions here. Next slide. Now we add in our measurements. So the missing ones are these inside. There's a hundred distance between the center point there to the center point of this arc. So 100. Between here and here should be 100. Then we have a radius measurement for this arc and this arc. So we have 40 and 15. The 
This one's 15. All right. Now we have the box, the rectangle measurements inside, 80 by 20. So let's do this. 80 by 20. And then between this line and this rectangle is 25 millimeters. So between this line and this line should be 25. All right, I believe we are done. Complete the sketch by clicking the check mark. And there it is.